The Los Angeles Times reported that 63% of American families are now considered dysfunctional. My God. <laughs> that means we're the majority. <laughs> we're normal. It's the people that had the mommy and the daddy and the brother and the sister, little white picket fence. Those people are the freaks, man. <laughs> My parents' divorce settlement involved a bar tab. They had a big court battle over who got to keep me. Mom won, she made me live with dad. <laughs> and dad collected things for me, stepmothers. Until I was 10, I thought women were rent to own. <laughs> I've got five stepmothers. My dad's been approved for a marriage license gold card. I now pronounce you man and wife. <laughs> Sign their bottom copy's yours. <laughs> my father, a hard drinking man from the 70s. We actually have no pictures of my dad where he is not holding a beer. Weddings, funerals, water skiing, <laughs> parent-teacher conference. <laughs> when I got sick around him as a kid growing up, he'd always warm me up a shot of 100 proof whiskey. Never got sick. <laughs> that I can remember. <laughs> if I had a cough, boom, shot of whiskey. Got out of hand though, one day I woke up in a field on my big wheel, naked. <laughs> Strange pampers on my head. First grade show and tell, taught the class to mix Long Island iced teas. <laughs> from scratch. <laughs> I love being from a screwed up family, man. We have everything in my family. Prescription drug abuse, mental illness. One of my uncles is a Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> And people get so weird about mental illness. It's like anything else. You follow the rules. You don't put a heart patient on a roller coaster. You don't put a mental patient on a hunting trip with you. <laughs> my mom's insane. Of course, I don't mean my mom is insane. I mean, we the jury find the defendant. <laughs> when I was a kid, she was in a mental care facility, or as dad so eloquently put it, she shacked up in the wacko basket. <laughs> Sleep well, boy! Actually, it comforts me to know that when I was in kindergarten gluing macaroni to paper plates, my mom was in therapy gluing macaroni to paper plates. <laughs> I used to put her projects on the refrigerator. <laughs> you better lighten the fuck up, because we're going a lot further than that tonight. You know, little kids can't draw, they draw you a picture, you have to guess what the hell the picture is. My mother had so many Rorschach tests, by the time I was three, she knew exactly what I drew every single time. Well, honey, tree, ducky, bunny, train, and those are the aliens that planted the microchip in my head. You wanna feel it? No. That's a pretty good call, Mom. I was going for doggy, but okay. But I want you to know I love my mom and I owe her everything, because without her, I don't exist. Without her, I wouldn't be doing this for a living. Without her in four states, it'd still be legal to kill a man with a cappuccino machine. <laughs> she touched a lot of lives. <laughs> Diagnosed manic depressive schizophrenic. Actually pretty cool as a kid, because I never really knew who was coming to dinner. <laughs> but I was pretty sure they were gonna be bummed out. <laughs> Used to piss my teachers off, and my permission slips had different signatures on them. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Smartass, why don't you stand up? <laughs> Who's this one supposed to be? It's my mom. <laughs> Call her. <laughs> but let me listen, let me listen, let me listen. I've had my lunch money, she's Wheezy Jefferson today. I love being from a screwed up family because nothing bothers me anymore. Nothing bugs me. Once you've driven a drunk father to mom's parole hearing, what else is there? <laughs> Bring it on! <laughs> normal people scare the living shit out of me. Normal people, because normal people haven't had enough problems in their life nor to handle problems when they come up. Something little happens, they just snap. <laughs> Toilet back up. Huh?
Oh, I'm getting a pickaxe and I'm going to Burger King. <laughs> Look at every serial killer we ever caught in this country. Catch a serial killer, get his family on television. What does the family say? He was so normal. <laughs> he was an Eagle Scout. His neighbors, yeah, he was really quiet. <laughs> That boy always said hi to me, though. So if you guys got a neighbor being real cool, always saying hi, take him out. <laughs> That's him. Love screwed up people, though. I hang out with screwed up people forever. Screwed up people are great, because screwed up people have been through some stuff. They know what can happen. They know the problems. Because if you've been through a lot of shit in your life, you know every time you see the shit just about to hit the fan, you step to the side of the fan. <laughs> That's right. And all the poor little normal people. <laughs> hey, you learned something, didn't you? Uh -oh, you got something right here. <sighs> Glad I was raised by my father instead of my mom, too. Because women in general suck at raising kids. That's right, I said it. Who wants some? Come on. <laughs> Here's what I mean, ladies. You see a kid putting a penny in a light socket, what do you do? Oh my God, stop it. You smack that little hand. Well, there. Well, when that kid's five, getting smacked in the hand is no big deal anymore. Fathers see the exact same child putting a penny in the livestock and go, no, wait, wait. <laughs> well, go on. <laughs> well, you're not gonna do that again, are you? No, I know it hurt. It shut your ass about eight feet. I saw. <laughs> Come on, get up. Yes, your eyebrows will grow back. Come on. <laughs> See, a mother will just give you knowledge. A father makes you earn knowledge. My dad never taught me dick my whole life. Just go do it. <laughs> <laughs> you screw it up, but sooner or later you'll get it right. Just go do it. Yeah, certain things that method should not be applied to, though, like your first break job. <laughs> <laughs> My first car was a 1977 Oldsmobile Delta 88. Ugly car. More ugly on this car than a Rolling Stones group photo. <laughs> and it was huge car to optional roof rack helicopter pad. <laughs> fill it with gas, back out of the driveway, fill it up again. <laughs> and one day the brakes started making this high-pitched grinding noise, and I was 16, so I listened to the noise for about 10 weeks. <laughs> I finally said, Dad, man, the car's making like a noise. <laughs> well, then you should like fix it. <laughs> so I backed the ass into the car into the garage, but I leave the front wheels on our 22 degree slope driveway and I jack up the ass end. <laughs> yes, I'm about to get a lesson in gravity, aren't I? And I know my father was in the living room window going, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so I'm under the car trying to make it stop better when I notice it start to go and my butt cheeks, thinking quickly, walk me out from under it. <laughs> and three tons of vehicle went shh on the garage floor. Now, I ended up on the other side of the car. My dad couldn't see me, but he came running out of the house. Chris, oh my God, Chris. And I thought, I probably should tell him I'm okay. But that little thing in my brain said, no, wait, wait. <laughs> Dad. <laughs> oh, God, get it off me. He went, you ain't dead. Get it off yourself. <laughs> and don't forget to put my goddamn tools away. And quit being a wussy. 